All right. So now that we're out on the road, I'm going to be doing a uh, review of my 2015 Kawasaki ZX6R. It's a 30, 30th anniversary edition. Comes with ABS. I've had it for a little over a week and a half now. And uh, I've put, let's see, I put seven, 700 miles on it. No, 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 not 700. Five or 600, still, regardless of how many miles I've put on it. Is a beautiful bike. Mostly stock. The only thing that's been changed is the uh, the gas tank lock. There's no longer a lock. It's just a twist off. So there's no key required. I didn't change that. That's how I got it. I would have preferred to have the key on there. Um, But that's uh, some nose changed on it before I got it. Uh, another thing that was changed before I got it is it already had a uh, tail tidy on it. So that ugly uh, fender that they have on there with the turn signals and all that's gone. So it's now tidied up. It's got an integrated tail light so the turn signals are integrated as well. Everything's really bright too, so I don't have to worry about it being too dark like my old bike. Um, but yeah, it's, this bike is fantastic. I, uh, let's see, what, what to talk about. Um, Alright, so it's got two different power modes to it. Uh, it's got full and low power which they say low power is for riding in the rain but it's uh it's also capable something that you can use if you're just a, a new rider i've been riding for about a year now a little over a year so i don't need to uh to put it in low power mode but i also haven't ridden in the rain with it yet and uh I might put it in low power mode, but I don't see why. It's got three three levels of traction control and you can turn it off if you so choose. So one is the lowest amount of traction control, two is in the middle, and three is like full traction control. Uh, very useful as well for in the rain, so I don't know why you'd go in low power mode because you could just use the traction control if you'd like. Um, but yeah, I mean, you use traction control, you use the low power mode, you're not going to go sliding around at all in the rain. But, uh, but yeah, still has the stock exhaust on it. Doesn't sound bad, but it's definitely not loud enough. Uh, you can't you can't hear it if you're in a car with the windows up and no music going or anything like that. So people that are distracted have the radio on, blah blah blah. They're not going to be able to hear me at all. So the shifting on this bike is super, super smooth. I mean, I would expect it to be since it's essentially a brand new bike. It had 4,600 miles on it when I got it. And it's 2015, got it in 2018. So it's a three-year-old bike with less than 5,000 miles, which in my opinion is a pretty good deal. She's a lot more upright than my previous bike. Uh, my previous bike actually was a 2000 ZX7R. 
so it's a little bit heavier it's about 100 pounds heavier actually so quite a bit heavier than this bike um, it's a lot less balanced it was very front heavy compared to this bike and uh, I don't know it's just fatter in general this bike does very well in pretty much all situations from what I've seen obviously I haven't ridden it in rain haven't taken it to the track haven't really done any major cornering in it because I am in Florida so not very many opportunities to test that out but overall this bike is super smooth braking is phenomenal especially with the ABS I haven't braked hard enough for the ABS to kick in yet but I still don't know why the uh, bike has this dimple in it I still I'm, I'm pretty convinced that it's for the stunt riders because the ninjas have a pretty stunt based community but uh, I don't do any of that so I have no need for this dimple here Top speed. I went uh, on a trip across, not across the state, but to the middle of the state on a group ride. On the way back, uh, we got we got a little bit into it. This thing got 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 up to about 145. So it it'll it'll go. That's for sure. Let's see what else. Oh, I put frame sliders on this already. It's got bar ends. And I put the spools on it, all Shogun sliders and whatnot, but that's the only thing I've done so far. I'd like to get an exhaust on it. I'm thinking of going with two bros because I like that deep sound that they have. But I'm not I'm not too sure yet. Either that or the M4 GP. Either way, I definitely need to do uh an, an exhaust on this if i had the money to do a full full exhaust i'd probably do like the acropovic or something like that but i don't have that kind of money to adjust the shift lever because it was way too high up the guy before me must have been super short or used his whole leg to uh to shift but i'm not i'm not part of that so uh see so yeah, i had to adjust that but um I don't know what else what else do people want to know about about this bike turning I suppose it's a lot more responsive than my ZX7 which is to I mean it, may, it makes sense the ZX7 is super fat the handlebars on the ZX7 the by the time you get to where you want to be able to actually start turning is where it finished it didn't have any turn radius whatsoever the the handlebars hit the tank before you were actually able to start turning so it couldn't turn this bike can turn turns very well too and I appreciate how well it can turn because I'm so used to how terribly the ZX7 turned but uh but yeah all right other gripes other than the exhaust being way too quiet despite how good it actually sounds um the seat is not the most comfortable seat 
Uh, it's not a bad seat, it, but longer rides, like if you, I don't know, if you're going to be out on the street or whatever for two hours, an hour even, it starts starts hurting, gets some, some cramped spots and whatnot, but... Other than that, I mean, the seat, it's a sport bike. What can you do? The grips are not that great. They start cramping up your hands after a little bit. But again, it's a sport bike. What can you do? Suspension isn't the greatest. To Kawasaki, they're not exactly known for having amazing suspension. Um, it's kind of bumpy. Definitely not Olin's, I can tell you that. Oh, that's the other thing. This bike, uh, I think from the 2009 model to the 2013 or 2012 is when that generation stopped. They had uh, Olin steering damper come stock with the bike. And now it does not. Which is fine, I mean, this bike is perfectly stable. I haven't had really any issues other than, you know, being on a bad road, it starts wobbling and whatnot. But that's like, you know, the grooves in the road or whatever and the tires of the bike follow the grooves. But that, I mean, I haven't had any issues on a road like this. This road is nice. Not perfect, but it's nice. Now this bike also redlines at 16,000 RPMs, which coming from the ZX-7, I thought it was crazy high. The ZX-7 maxes out at 12.5. That's, that's where the red line starts. So 16,000 is craziness. Now the bike does have, at 14,000, it has the shift light come on, it starts flashing yellow, which is like, you know, shift soon or shift now or whatever. That's fine. It probably starts flashing red once you get to 16,000. I haven't done that. I shift when it gets to 14, but... Yeah, it's got the shift light, you know, shift now. Um, it's got a shift gear shift indicator, so to tell or a gear indicator to tell you what gear you're in. This bike has a ton of features, a ton, a ton of features. I never had any of this stuff with with the ZX7, but you know, again, 15 years makes a big difference. One of the most fun roads in Florida right there. Now we get to get stuck behind people. Very windy today. This bike handles wind pretty well for the most part. Um, it does wobble a little bit more than my ZX-7 simply because there's less weight there. But all in all, it handles the wind pretty well. Um, the windscreen on this bike is definitely too short. Uh, it puts the wind right in my face. But when you are laying on the tank, it is 
essentially perfect. Um, it, it, I mean, when you're when you're laying on the tank, the it puts everything right over your face, o over the helmet, over your back, everything. It just very streamlined. The tank feels really good laying down on it too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, not much else to say. Engine braking on this bike is also very nice. It's not too much, not too little. Just enough to kind of slow you down. You know? Just enough to make you not need to use your brakes too much. So I'm just going to do a quick little walk around. Um, I just love the way this bike looks. I mean, the front end is super, super, super aggressive compared to what they had before. But yeah, that's uh, 2015 ZX6R 636, 30th anniversary edition. Talk to you guys next time.